Hello, Internet viewers. Uh, my name is Frank Rauscher. Uh, I've given you a couple videos before this showing you uh, the different carvings I've done. And I talked about uh, getting to do a river otter. Uh, I showed you a pattern similar to the, well, it's this one right here. And what I want to do is take you again from the pattern right on through to uh, accomplishing uh, something very similar to this, which was uh, the mother and baby otter. I'm going to start you out. We're going to do the mother today, which is a little bigger scale than what I had just showed you there. But I'm going to get the pattern, and this this would refer to almost any animal, and if you were doing birds, it would be the same thing. You have a profile view, and this is the other side, and this is the top view. And you need these in almost every everything you're doing to get everything proportionalized. Uh, I have an engineering background, so I measure a lot of stuff, and if you notice, I have a lot of measurements down here to get the face corrected, where the eyes go, where the mouth should go, the nose, the length, and I also have the top view looking down on the head, and this is the profile view. And uh, with this, what we try to do is create the head. But before we even do that, we got to get this into a wood form. So what I'm just trying to show you is the basics, which uh, maybe a lot of people know. But uh, what I'm trying to do is walk you through it all. And, and hopefully uh, this will be something that you learn and you can apply this to whatever you're trying to carve. And if you have these views, and like I said before, uh, there are uh, books out there, and I can recommend them if you're looking for a specific book. Uh, I do handle a lot of products as well as books and what have you. I have the patterns available if anybody needs to. They can contact me and I can provide the patterns. I also have kits for this where you have the eyes and the blank and uh, and the pattern and I can show you how to start right from this so what we're going to do initially is we're getting this pattern and I'm going to show you how to make a template and what I do is I get this sheet and what I also use it's called uh, graphite paper it's uh, it's like dark on one side, it's like a uh, waxy, I guess, and it's pretty plain on this side. And what I do is I get this sheet, and I have a piece of cardboard, or it could be anything. I'm going to show you how I get this onto a piece of cardboard. I put the cardboard behind it enough that I have room enough to... To do that outline of the auto. I slide the graphite paper behind it and then I go with a pen. It's better to do it with a pen because, and I'll show you, I'll, I'm just going to outline a little bit with a pen just to give you the flavor of it. And then I'm going to show you one that's already been cut out. So I'll do that and get this whole profile. So you really need just one of these profiles and the top view done this way. And what happens, it comes onto here and it gets marked out. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's like the head coming out right here. And what I do is I go back over it with a ballpoint pen and then what I do is I cut it out with a pair of scissors. Now, in the case of the cutouts, or the patterns I do, here's one of them that I did. It's on like a thicker cardboard. It has like a waxy finish on both sides. You can use almost anything. You can get a piece of cardboard. Uh, you can, wh whatever's available to you that's easily trimmed up with a pair of scissors and what have you. And when I get done, I can get this pattern. 
and I can lay it right over one of the views like this and it's the exact thing that we have there and if I wanted to flip it it's the same thing for this view too up here so I can it's a duplicate either way you look at it and that's how you make your template once you've got this template then you could start building okay I do that for uh, the profile view and then also I do it for the bottom view or I should say the top view <laughs> excuse me and then I do the exact same thing I make a template for that so I do one of these up top of the profiles and one for the bottom and that's all you need if you were doing birds one thing and I'll show you uh, what I do in some cases this is like a flicker I did just to give you an idea and, and when I go to do a bird I will uh, also explain this again uh, I usually run a center line right down the middle of the bird in everything symmetrical about that center line you're duplicating what's on this side and what's on that side if you notice the head is turned and uh, what I try to do in nature uh, you'll see a lot of people carve birds and they're straight on and that's not saying birds won't be in straight on position but in most cases, they're turning their head. They're, they're looking from the side. They're always trying to pick up angles because their eyes are not straight in front of them like ours. They're on the side, so they, they always have their heads turned. That's almost typical. So I'll even, uh, when I design birds, I'll even do it to a point where I'll even turn the head 90 degrees from where this is at. You can see with the center line coming straight up this way then the center line for the beak is going out that way so you can change the angle and move the head around and create that as part of your blank when you go to cut it out so uh, I try to keep that concept in mind and if you look at uh, the otter itself uh, the other thing I did with this is because it's in motion and we're trying to make it seem like it's underwater and it's swimming. I don't. My center line for this whole animal is coming down, and it's curving. It's a, it's always a, like a an arc. So we, I, I provided that into the picture. So. It gives it movement, and that's what I'm trying to achieve. I'm always trying to look at it as if it is uh, reflecting something in nature, and not so straight, and, and everything looks pointy. Uh, when you do have some people that do animals, uh, a lot of times you see the patterns where the feet are in line with each other, so everything's in line, and, and to some extent they are, but you try to deviate a little bit, so it puts motion into your carving. And a lot of times you'll see a lot of carvings look stiff. Two feet plugged alongside each other the same way. And uh, it, 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 in profile, you, all you do is you see one and it's, it's different. Uh, and it's not different from one side to the other. But if you stagger the foot a little bit on one of them, you can build that into here. Uh, the foot is showing on this otter right here, but the other one is in here somewhere, and we're, we're going to provide that uh, as we go. You can see one's here, the other side. It's up here, and this is just the, the flip of this over here. So uh, what I try to do is I always try to conceive uh, uh, some motion and in, in, in trying to get what you're trying to carve. It, it When you get to the final product, you have an item that doesn't look like a standard cookie cutter type uh, carving and you, you got to keep this as a, a, a an idea 
that this is the way to put motion into a piece that's rigid. You know, we're we're trying to make it look like it's ready to fly away, or in the case of the otters, we're trying to make them look like they're swimming. So uh, I end up, again, making these templates, and the template I have on this one especially is I have a directional arrow on here. And the reason why I do that is when we go to cut this out, I want to cut this so that I'm with the grain of the wood. So it gives us strength. So you have strength here and here, here and here. So uh, when you go against the grain, if you were to try to carve this with a knife, it would want to chip off if it was in an opposite direction. If you're looking to try to cut uh, a piece of wood totally against the grain, the grain was going this way, it, it can chip. And you got to be really extra careful because you, the grain isn't with you. And, and, and you really want to do that. Uh, in the case of us, I'm going to be doing it with power carving. That's rotary tools and and uh, you won't, won't see a knife on mostly anything I do here. Uh, and the idea is it gives you more flexibility. I could actually go totally against the grain. And because we're not hacking away with a knife or a chisel or something like that, you can uh, go against the grain. But in all cases, I like to keep strength within the wood so that your piece is going to last forever. And in the case of this otter, and I'll bring this one back into play here, where the mother, when she comes down and touches the rock right here, she has to have some strength in there because she's supporting all of them. We pin the baby to the mother after we get them both carved, and there's like a little piece of wire that's driven into this wooden uh, rock here and into the into the mother and that gives it the strength to be able to hold that up so you try to work it where you can and if you had to be against the grain and you want to strengthen that sometime uh, another trick is that we'll use down the road is super glue uh, and you don't want really good super glue if you go like to a dollar store and you buy not uh, the gel but the regular super glue, it's watery. It's uh, and if you put it on wood, it'll soak in, and that'll close the pores and strengthen it up, and uh, that helps to strengthen some areas. Uh, if you're doing birds, I usually do it in the beak because it goes in, in into uh, the beak, and then I sand it, and that will uh, give you like a, a smooth finish, almost like a plastic. And, and when you look at birds, uh, the beaks uh, look like bone, and that's what you want to try to portray. And so we do that as a trick to try to get that bony look. But in the case of just getting some strength sometime, and super glue is, is helpful in some areas, but in, in the case of the otters here, we're r r rarely going to use that. But what I want to do now is I'm going to go with a block of wood, which is basswood. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm going to lay, and you can see like a, a, an outline in pencil that I already went around on here, but I'm going to do it in front of you so you can see it. I'm going to lay this down. Now, the grain of the wood, of basswood, is going this way. This is a this was a long slab of wood that ran both ends. I cut a piece off. The other thing you also have to consider when you're doing something is that when you are going to do the top view, it's got to accommodate what you have as far as what needs to be to get this thing on. Okay, and this thing's just going to fit just right because I I planned ahead of time, but. You need to have this width being able to accept 
this uh, otter pattern on the top as well as the side. So I'm going to start on the side. Let's see if I can tilt this a little bit more for you. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this right here. I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to get my ball pen because you can see it more readily and I'm going to go in and I'm going to go all around and it's good to use something uh, like oh, excuse me sorry about that uh, you want to use something that uh, is strong enough just real thin cardboard can can dent up a little bit where uh, if you can get something that's suitable uh, I'll end up uh, putting this on the piece of wood like this now here's what I was trying to say to you before here's the piece right there here's the grain going this way and that's why I have this in that position is because the grain's going with me. I have strength in that. And I'm not showing it too well. So here we go. Sorry about that. The view isn't exactly right. But uh, now you can see it better. And this is what I'm going to put on a bandsaw. So that you can watch and see me do that too as well. And what I'm going to do is to conserve on the wood. I'm going to do this a second time where I can maybe get two pieces out of this wood and I try to do that again so I will come up here and get this out one more time so that maybe I could do two of them but right now I'm concerned with the one and you can cut out two of them at the same time. So I'm going to put this on the bandsaw. I'm going to try to get this set up so you can follow me on that as well. And if you don't have a bandsaw, you could get like one of these uh, uh, saws, like a cooking saw. I don't know if I have one here or not. Uh, I thought I did, but I don't. And But what I use is a bandsaw, and, and I cut this out. So for those who want to do their own, this is how you do it. If you want to get uh, blanks or patterns or whatever you need, if you have the pattern, you can cut your own out. If you want to, uh, uh, what's the name, uh, have somebody cut it out. I, I provide patterns and I provide the blanks. If you want a kit where you get the eyes, the feet, I mean the eyes and the blank, and the pattern I have them available too and you could check that out uh, by writing to me or uh, um, check my email or just uh, and I'll try to see if I can't take care of you on that if you don't have the facilities to cut one of these out and uh, I'm going to go now and I'm going to try to get this thing set up so I can cut this out and I'm going to show you how I do that as well just so if you do have the equipment, you can do this. And if you don't, we can provide this if you need it. And it's just a matter of contacting me. If you need just a pattern and you want to do what I'm doing right now, you're welcome to do that as well. So bear with me and I'll be right with you. Okay, I am now going to show you how I cut uh, from a block of wood. I'm going to follow the pattern. I'm going to cut one of these out so you can see exactly. Uh, my machine may make a little bit of noise more than I am. So I'm going to just do it and you can follow me. I'm following the outline to what I have. one cut of the 
that one on the top. Now I'm going to do the rest of it. trying to achieve here at this stage and then what we'll do is I'm going to take you back and we're going to try to do the top view now and I'll show you how to do that bear with me a second okay now I'm going to do the top view here's the profile already cut out and what I'm going to do is I laid the template on top here I follow the outline. I like to do this with a pencil. It seems for some odd reason easier to do. So I'll run this down right along the template. Right on back. And I'll hold this. And I do it this way. Come over here. And then I run this down along this edge, right over into the corner. And I spin this around and I get the head again. Make sure that nothing moved too much. So you're, then I follow the head outline up to where the foot sticks out here. I follow the body outline and I come up. I'll get the feet on the back end here. And then I go out with the tail. So now I have this coming out here. And I'll go back and heavy this up so I can follow it. This pops out here and comes around. I hope you can see this well. And I get the top view on here. So what I will do now is I'm going back and I'm going to trim this out. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay. So bear with me again. Okay. Now I'm going to cut the top view here. So this is how I do that as well. up because this is the position we need to trim this so we don't tr cut the foot off so I hold this up on there and trim that off and I don't touch the foot 
and that's what that's prov uh, providing. I don't want to cut that foot off. Then I come into the tail where the legs are here. I trim that, and then I trim the tail. And then I'm going to trim the other side of the tail. And then come and trim this off this way. So I can preserve the feet on the bottom. Don't want to cut that off neither. Then I'm going to trim the rest of the body. So I'm going to come in here. top view cut out. This is all of the top view and you can see I've followed the lines pretty closely all around here and now we have a blank we can work with and the grain is going this way so we have the strength with it. So I'm going to continue when we reach the table and hope to try to show you some more on the next stages that I do uh, with the blank. And I will do that on the next video. But this is how you would cut out the blank if you were to do this yourself. And you could do this with a, I think it's called a coping saw. You can cut it out that way too. It's a little uh, more lengthier, but uh, the bandsaw is a, an easy way of getting it done if you have the facilities. And like I said, if you are in need of uh, getting the blank or something like that, I will, uh, I could provide you with this as well as the patterns. Uh, I also uh, have the eyes, whatever you may need. So uh, I would be pleased if you would uh, subscribe and I'm going to take you on to the next stage on the next video and what we'll do We'll start working on the blank itself, and that's what this is called. And then we will go from here. I'll show you how to put the center line in, how to put the dimensions in, and uh, we'll get all the references. Uh, again, I hope you would subscribe to the channel. Uh, I would like to go nice and easy on each stage, and I do that, so I break this up in segments so that you can digest what I've done so far. Uh, and if you need copies on anything, just contact me uh, at my Gmail address, and I'll be pleased to help you out on that as well. Uh, uh, I do sell whatever's involved with doing the project itself too. So uh, definitely contact me when you get a chance. And I thank you very much, and I'll see you on the next video.